How long would the U.S. last after a total power grid collapse? Back in February 2021, Texas got hit hard by a winter storm unlike anything we've seen before. Even making temperatures plunge lower than in Anchorage, Alaska. Can you believe it? This whole mess was kicked off by some crazy weather patterns, including a polar jet stream and a vortex getting way too cozy with the South. It was so bad it knocked out power for almost 10 million folks across the U.S. and Mexico, with Texas bearing the brunt of it. We saw firsthand how our power setup just wasn't ready for that kind of cold snap, leading to shortages in water, food, and heat. And tragically, it cost at least 246 people their lives. Turns out the main culprit was our power plants not being up to snuff for the freezing conditions. You'd think after all this talk about renewables being the future, it'd be those wind turbines that let us down, right? But no, it was actually the traditional sources, natural gas, coal, and even nuclear, that fell short. Despite what some folks tried to say at the start, blaming renewables and frozen turbines, it was clear the real issues lay with the natural gas plants and others freezing up and running out of fuel. We were this close to a complete grid meltdown because the demand was just too much for the supply to handle. So the Texas legislature finally stepped in, telling the electricity regulators to get those power plants ready for whatever mother nature throws at us next. Though, for some reason, the natural gas folks got a bit of a pass from the Texas Railroad Commission. The hope is to fix these gaps so we don't find ourselves in the dark again. This whole ordeal really shone a light on just how fragile our power grid is and how the systems overseeing it need a serious overhaul. Take ERCOT, for example. They're supposed to be in charge of the Texas grid, but don't have much in the way of oversight. We've had warnings before, like the freeze back in 2011 telling us we needed to do better. Clearly, we've got some work to do to make sure this doesn't happen again. Imagine waking up after a bitterly cold night in Texas grappling with the possibility that the power grid has indeed failed. Here we are at Finance Daily, diving into today's topic, the far-reaching effects of power outages on our essential services. It's not uncommon to be jolted awake by various disturbances, the sudden bang of a truck misfiring in the distance, the cries of a newborn, or the clatter of a cat causing mischief. Yet there's something profoundly unsettling about being stirred from sleep by an unusual quiet. A stark reminder from your instincts that the familiar hums and whirs of household life have vanished. It barely takes a moment in your half-awake state to realize the cause. The fridge is mute. There's no warm air whispering from the vents, and the ceiling fan overhead is winding down its last revolutions. The electricity is gone. A quick glance at your phone confirms it's 4 a.m. too early to do much but hope for a swift resolution by sunrise. Have you ever been sitting at home? Maybe enjoying your favorite show or working on an important project when suddenly everything goes dark? I bet most of us have been there, caught in the unexpected annoyance of a power outage. Usually it's just a minor hiccup, right? These outages tend to be short-lived, often just a matter of minutes or a few hours. And typically, they hit just a small area. Ever wonder why that is? Well, it turns out our power grid, or what the experts call a wide area interconnection, is built with some pretty smart design features. It's fascinating, actually. The system has built-in redundancies and alternative routes to ensure electricity gets to where it needs to go, even if one path is blocked. Plus, with power users and producers scattered across the map, the risk of a widespread impact from a single event is minimized. Sounds pretty robust, doesn't it? But here's the kicker. The very thing that makes our power system resilient, this interconnectedness, is also its Achilles heel. Imagine if something major goes wrong, it's not just a neighborhood or two in the dark. We're all in this together. And let me tell you, the reasons for these wide-scale outages can vary wildly. Remember the chaos in Texas? That was a stark reminder that a simple mismatch between supply and demand can plunge millions into darkness. But it's not just about the supply and demand. What about natural disasters, human errors, or even deliberate attacks? These could all bring our grid to its knees. And perhaps the scariest part? In the initial hours of a major outage, you might not realize the severity of the situation. You could think it's just another temporary glitch, like a tree branch messing with the transformer down the street, while in reality, the entire system might be teetering on the edge. Imagine this scenario. You've just snapped awake. A solid three hours later than you intended, shivering slightly as the first rays of sunlight sneak past your curtains, signaling a bright but chilly morning. 
The power outage from last night is still in full effect, your room a quiet testament to the unexpected stillness that has enveloped your neighborhood. Instinctively, you reach for your cell phone, its battery fully charged, thanks to your foresight in plugging it in overnight, and the signal bars standing tall. But something's off. When you try to dial a friend's number for some updates, all you're greeted with is the automated all circuits are busy message, no matter how many times you retry. Ever wondered how we're so interconnected in today's digital age? From texts to tweets, video calls to voice notes, we rely on an intricate web of technology that sprawls across the globe, all of which is powered by the grid. Let's break it down. Our lifeline, the internet, travels through fiber networks which hinge on countless switches and optical terminals. Then there's cable TV and DSL networks, each node powering the connections of 500 to 1,000 customers, all craving juice from the grid. And let's not forget about cellular networks, those unseen signals bouncing off base stations mounted high above us on towers and rooftops. Here's a number that might surprise you. During a blackout, telecommunication facilities, those silent sentinels of our digital lives, can keep humming along for four to eight hours, thanks to backup batteries. And for the truly critical spots like cellular base stations and data centers, there are on-site generators ready to take over, boasting enough fuel to push that 24 to 48 hours further into the dark. But what happens when everyone, and I mean everyone, picks up their phone in a crisis, desperately trying to connect? The system gets overwhelmed. Despite the technology and backup plans, the sheer volume of calls can clog the network, making it tough for your average Joe to get a call out. Did you know that in such scenarios, the U.S. federal government steps in, working hand-in-hand -hand with telecommunications providers to ensure that essential communications for emergency services, disaster relief, you name it, have a clear path through the digital congestion? That's right. There's even a special program for it, the Telecommunications Service Priority Program, designed to keep critical calls jumping to the front of the line. So why can't you get through to your friend? Simply put, your call like many others, is playing second fiddle to the more critical communications flying through the airwaves. After a couple of hours, suddenly, an emergency alert flashes across your screen. It's not just any alert, but a serious warning about a power grid failure, urging you to brace yourself for an extended outage. This isn't just a minor inconvenience, it's a stark wake-up call to the reality we're facing. In today's world, where nearly everyone has a smartphone glued to their hand, Wireless emergency alerts have revolutionized the way we receive critical information. They're a key component of the Emergency Alert System, EAS, a sophisticated network that links various government levels to TV, radio, satellite, and telephone companies, ensuring that public warnings and alerts reach every corner of the nation. But have you ever thought about what happens when the lights go out and we're plunged into darkness? During a blackout, our usual social media updates take on a whole new level of importance. It's no longer about garnering likes or shares. It's about keeping our communities safe, connecting individuals to vital resources, and preserving the social fabric that holds us together. The two-way communication tools we rely on daily, like cell phones and the internet, may quickly become unreliable in a grid outage. That's where one-way networks such as radio and television broadcasts step into the limelight. These are not just relics of the past, but lifelines in times of crisis. With their extensive backup fuel reserves and emergency provisions for staff, these facilities are designed to operate for weeks on end, ensuring that crucial information continues to flow even when everything else stops. But let's get real for a moment. How prepared are we truly for such scenarios? Statistics show that a staggering 90% of Americans own a cell phone, yet only a fraction have access to or regularly use a battery-powered radio. In an era where digital has become the norm, it's easy to overlook the value of these traditional channels. Yet, in emergencies, they become our most reliable sources of information. In just a matter of days, our lives can pivot dramatically based on the whims of our circumstances. This notion hits home especially hard when we consider the ramifications of a power outage extending beyond a mere couple of days. Such disruptions can gravely impact those among us who rely on critical, electricity-dependent medical aids, such as life-sustaining ventilators or dialysis machines, or even something as seemingly simple as medication that must be kept refrigerated. For a portion of the population, a blackout lasting a day or two might present an unexpected break from the monotony of daily routines. 
offering a chance to engage in more traditional forms of entertainment like candlelit dinners or stargazing, activities that remind us of a simpler time. However, the charm quickly fades as we enter the critical 48-hour mark. The scarcity of supplies becomes palpable, urging a reconsideration of our immediate needs and survival strategies. One of the most fundamental of these needs is access to water, a necessity that is surprisingly reliant on electricity. Cities employ vast amounts of energy to ensure the public has access to clean, potable water. This involves not just the pumping, but also the treatment and purification processes, all of which are electricity dependent. Consider Texas, for example, where regulations stipulate that large urban centers must maintain a minimum of 200 gallons, approximately 750 liters, of water per system connection, with at least half of this volume stored in elevated tanks to ensure gravity can do the work should the pumps fail. This mandate is designed to safeguard against the immediate impacts of power outages, ensuring that water continues to flow to all residents for about two days under typical usage conditions. Yet when we factor in the reserves powered by backup generators, some cities might stretch their water supply to last three, four days without electricity. Beyond this point, without a significant deployment of emergency services, water scarcity becomes a dire concern transforming from a mere inconvenience to a potential crisis. The intertwined issue of sewage management further complicates the situation. Sewage systems, too, depend heavily on electricity to operate lift stations and treatment facilities. While regulations exist requiring backup power for these infrastructures, they are generally calibrated for short-duration outages. Prolonged blackouts exceed these provisions, risking untreated sewage being discharged directly into natural water bodies, or, in worst-case scenarios, causing backflows and overflows. This not only poses a significant environmental hazard, but also elevates the risk of public health emergencies due to exposure to raw sewage. In the challenging week following the onset of a widespread blackout, the initial novelty of a slower pace has starkly diminished. Despite diligent efforts to maintain a charged cell phone through car batteries, reliable signals have become a rarity, with successful phone connections increasingly becoming the exception rather than the norm. The dwindling gasoline reserves, now a precious commodity as station supplies have been redirected to fuel backup generators at vital facilities, exacerbate the situation. After seven days, it's a stark reality that most are grappling with dwindling supplies of food and water. The fortunate few have engaged in communal sharing or bartering, or found the rare store open for business, operating on a cash-only basis due to the blackout. The resilience of essential services is now solely buoyed by backup power systems at priority establishments such as hospitals and radio stations, or those equipped with renewable energy sources like solar or wind power. This crisis underscores the intricate interdependence of our infrastructure networks, revealing a paradox. The restoration of power is most hindered by the absence of power itself. The repercussions are far-reaching. Power plants struggle to procure fuel without the operational backbone of electricity-dependent data centers, telecommunications, banks, and energy markets. The absence of power halts natural gas compressors and disrupts railway systems, leaving coal supplies for power generation stagnant. Traffic congestion spirals as non-functional signals lead to increased accidents and reduced throughput at intersections, further complicating the mobility of essential workers who are critical to the recovery effort. Moreover, the complexity of our infrastructure systems, heavily reliant on SCADA, supervisory control and data acquisition, technologies for automated operations, presents another layer of challenge. These systems, which include oil and gas pipelines, public water systems, and electrical grids, necessitate power to function. In the absence of automation, even if personnel can reach critical control points, the lack of operational knowledge under manual conditions poses significant hurdles. As the blackout prolongs, the depletion of water, fuel, food, medicine, and other essential supplies accelerates, leading to the breakdown of more systems. The task of reactivating each infrastructure component, already a formidable challenge in isolation, becomes nearly insurmountable without the support and synergy of adjacent systems. Entering the second week of the blackout, the situation becomes increasingly dire, with the thin veneer of societal normalcy beginning to crack under the strain of sustained infrastructure failure. 
The absence of electricity has set off a cascading effect on critical services and supplies, revealing vulnerabilities in our societal fabric that few had anticipated or prepared for. By now, food scarcity becomes a palpable reality. Supermarkets, already running on severely depleted stocks, are unable to receive new deliveries as logistic networks remain paralyzed. The reliance on just-in-time delivery systems means that there is little to no buffer of food supplies and storage, leading to empty shelves and increasing desperation among the population. Local farms and community gardens, where they exist, become vital sources of fresh produce, though they are hardly sufficient to meet the needs of the broader population. Water supply issues escalate dramatically. Without power to operate pumps and treatment facilities, the availability of clean drinking water diminishes rapidly. Bottled water stocks are exhausted, and public health risks increase as people turn to untreated sources. The situation underscores the critical interdependency between power and water services, with the lack of one severely impacting the other. Healthcare services are pushed to their limits. Hospitals that have been relying on backup generators face the grim reality of fuel shortages impacting their ability to provide care. Critical patients dependent on power for life-sustaining equipment are at grave risk. The healthcare crisis is compounded by a surge in illnesses related to poor sanitation, contaminated water, and deteriorating living conditions. Public order becomes increasingly difficult to maintain. As resources dwindle, instances of looting and civil unrest rise, with law enforcement stretched thin and facing similar logistical challenges as the rest of the population. Community solidarity is tested as desperation grows. The prolonged power outage highlights the complexity of restarting the grid. Power plants, disconnected for safety during the initial stages of the blackout, require external power sources to restart, a process known as black start. However, the widespread nature of the blackout means that finding a nearby operational power source is challenging. Additionally, the grid must be carefully balanced to match supply with demand as it comes back online, a task made more difficult by the lack of communication and coordination capabilities. Economically, the impact is severe. Small businesses unable to operate due to the lack of power and reduced consumer spending face permanent closure, leading to job losses and further economic decline. Electricity transcends the realm of luxury. It's the backbone of our modern existence. This isn't merely about our personal use. From the moment we wake, our lives intertwine with systems and conveniences powered by electricity, shaping the orderly flow of our society. The reality is stark. The absence of a functional electrical grid spells chaos, albeit not immediately. My own experience during the Texas winter storm, where power was a distant dream for three days, taught me this. It wasn't just about enduring the dark and cold, it was witnessing the resilience and unity of communities. Neighbors extended hands of generosity, embodying the spirit of cooperation. Yet this ordeal wasn't without its scars. While some, like myself, emerged relatively unscathed, others bore the brunt of the hardship. Statistics underscore the criticality of electricity. For instance, the Department of Energy reports that the average American household consumes approximately 10,715 kilowatt hours annually. This figure reflects not just comfort, but survival, powering essential services that sustain life. Despite the infrequency of widespread blackouts, the threat looms large, spurred by natural disasters and extreme weather events. Historical data reveal that between 2000 and 2020, the United States experienced over 1,300 significant power outages, affecting millions and underscoring the fragility of our infrastructure. The role of government in ensuring preparedness cannot be overstated. In the United States, we take pride in our robust disaster response mechanisms. Federal agencies, notably FEMA, offer a blueprint for resilience, emphasizing the importance of readiness. FEMA's guidelines, accessible to all citizens, advocate for a proactive stance towards disaster preparedness, advising on essential supplies and strategies to mitigate the impact of long-duration outages. Thank you for watching. Stay safe until next time.